Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the Rem Alternus backers and friends stream of some Shadowrun in Seattle. Uh, my name is Aaron. I will be your friendly and angry GM occasionally, um, hopefully giving the players an excellent time to shine and enjoy uh, their time today. Uh, we plan on running until uh, about 5 Eastern time, which for me, the poor Seattleite, um, that means I will get done right after lunch. So uh, with that, I'm going to allow each of the folks here to introduce themselves. Uh, first, let's pass it over to Whipper. Hi, I'm Eric DeMage. I play Whipper in this game. I'm a Shadowrun super fan. Unlike a lot of people think, you know, on here, uh, doing a lot of interesting Shadowrun things, I do most of my stuff in the background. Although I am the moderator for the Shadowcasters Network Discord. Um, also, it's also, I'd like to promote a book by a, uh, it's a bit of a stretch to call her a friend because she lives in Great Britain and I've only met her once, but Roz Savage, she rode across the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Indian Ocean, not in that order. And I, when I mean road, I mean literally like road. It was a big rowboat, about the size of a Ford F-150, but it was all muscle power uh, by herself. And she wrote a book for the crisis called The Gifts of Solitude, uh, which is selling on Amazon for $3.49 for the Kindle edition or uh, $8 and some change for the hardback. I highly recommend it. It's uh, it's a good read. And if when it comes to solitude, she knows her business because it takes a long time time to row across those oceans so if you are interested in that i put a link down below in the we support section so uh definitely uh give a little bit of love to that book it's uh looks like it's gonna be really interesting i put it on my uh my pickup list and will likely read it myself uh sarah how about introduce yourself a little hi i'm sarah um i own rem alternatives productions um, the trailer is wrapping up for Chicago Shadows uh, in post-production. We were lucky. We got shooting done just before COVID exploded everywhere. Um, so we are wrapping up and we'll be releasing that trailer in June. Um, but uh, I'm also running a brand new um, D&D 5E um, episodical series where we go through um, each of the... Uh, 5e campaigns and that just started this morning so that'll be posted on youtube soon and um yeah i'm just excited to play some Shadowrun. awesome awesome tom i'm tom augustine also teslan kiranek uh kiranhawk wow misspelled my own misspoke my own name that's a good start you're doing great uh, yeah <laughs> uh i i do the it work for uh, Rem Alternus and the video editing and audio editing uh, at times. The uh, I'm also a CDT agent like Aaron and uh, I'm looking forward to or I'm not sure I'm looking forward to it but we're shifting a lot of our stuff online now and I'm trying to get some to Shadowwood missions online uh, to uh, to make sure everybody doesn't forget it and hopefully give people a chance to try the new 6th six, six edition. Uh, in addition to that, and this is where I'm going to plug my next project, I want to start my own stream, kind of taking off on what Sarah did with D&D. &D, I want to do with uh, uh, Fate Accelerated. So I'm going to be kind of doing a casting call to see who's interested in getting into Dresden Accelerated, because who doesn't love uh, the the world that you know Jim Butcher has created uh, with Harry Dresden. Uh, so, if you are my at Teslon writes, it's down below the stream. Uh, go ahead and feel free to contact me if you're interested in doing something like this and uh, getting a chance to learn Dresden. Awesome, thanks, Tom. And Fade, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, how about you introduce yourself? Um. Sure. Um, I'm Sphera. I uh, occasionally play tabletop games. Um, it's been a bit weird with everything going on, and I haven't really had as much time available as I'd like. But um, yeah, no, I don't really have a whole lot going on to really 
talk about, unfortunately. Well, as as you uh, you know get a chance to grab some new stuff, definitely reach out. We'll put it in the links below. Make sure that people have a way to find you and uh, see what you're doing. I was say, oh, I guess I do have a Twitter at ZFA, which is I guess my name everywhere else. But other than that, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I've got that down there. Um, again, really, we want to help support our, our geeky friends in the community and really make this, uh, you know, really highlight the things that are being done that are really awesome. Um, it's easy to fall into the community and fall in love with it, and uh, we want to keep building on that. But with that, I'm going to start uh, a little bit of Shadowrun for all y'all. Um, and so we'll get character introductions as they get to go meet the Johnson. And so it starts on a Monday morning, uh, at least Monday morning for a uh, Shadowrunner, which is probably around 2 p.m. Uh, you each receive text messages on your comms, uh, specifically calling out for specialists needed for uh, a little bit of a investigation. Uh, and the, the calling card uh, says uh, a Mr. Johnson, of course, uh, but there's a symbol on it, and the symbol uh, appears to be a crucifix. Uh, it says, if interested, uh, meet me at uh, Dante's Inferno at uh, 8 o'clock tonight. Ask for Brother Johnson. Great, here we go. Um, I'll be there. I should call out that it says Chicago Shadows in the bottom in the background, uh, but that's because we're supporting Chicago Shadows. Uh, we are running in Seattle, um, mostly because Seattle is also super fun. Uh, all right, so uh, everybody sort of, uh, you know, well, first off, does anybody want to do any sort of research uh, prior to uh, heading off to Dante's Inferno. Yes. Okay. What What are you gonna do? Uh... Well, first off, I'm gonna check. You know, uh, I'm gonna roll theology for if there's anything specific with that. For that. Uh, come on. For that particular. The symbol. The symbol, yeah. Okay. I mean, other than it, it, it's a crucifix, but if there's anything, if it's any kind of stylized or anything like that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Give me a give me that roll. Loving the glasses, fade. Thank you. So You're cool. Very much for the character. You need to send me a link for those glasses. Huh. All right. Is we'll it popping do. up for you guys? Nope. Uh, I am. Uh, I saw well, it now. It, yep, it just it just popped up. It took a while for. Yeah, sometimes Discord's a little slow. Uh, not Discord. <laughs> Roll twenty. Um, so you got one success. Uh, what you know of the symbol is you recognize it as being uh from the. That's it's used really prevalently with uh, the order, uh, which is one of the more um, sort of investigative arms of the church. Okay. All right. Um, and Johnson, of course, is just a name. Uh... Yeah, you recognize that, like, uh, that the church has not deviated from the uh, sort of nomenclature that's being used about the shadow runs that they felt Johnson was perfectly adequate. Or if you're in uh, one of the other locales, maybe Schmidt. Uh, so who is quiet thunders? Anyone? I do not know. Um, so what we've got is uh, you guys, uh, uh, w did anybody else have any other research? Um, I don't really have any research, but I was going to go ahead and um, compile up a level four machines. 
All right, sounds good. Uh, I will roll the uh, the four dice. Yeah, roll 20 is awfully slow today. I wonder if they're under duress. I mean, the internet is probably collapsing under the weight of the fact that we live all on the internet all the time. Uh, what year did the first Matrix crash happen? Uh, uh, 2030s, <laughs> I think. All right, so we are 10 years early. Which actually happened for a lot of technology. It showed up, you know, that much earlier, so... I'm going to try that again. Okay, that I can mute. <laughs> yes, I'm going to just uh, do that. Uh, what was that? Yeah, it's uh, Will plus Res. Yes. For Fade? Yeah. Well, for, uh, for just a. Oh, no, it's a compiling skill. It's uh, a compiling skill, yeah. So it should be res plus yeah. compile. Let me just let me just roll that. Let me check the summer real fast if it's my dice pulls in any ports. Yeah, the I have noticed sometimes. Yep. Yeah, I have noticed that sometimes uh the import doesn't quite grab everything that you need it to because of specializations that you've added. Um, but it does yep. pretty well. Well, as you roll that, I'll start describing the the on the way over. So you you eventually make your way over. Um, I, I imagine some of you arrive early. Some of you decide that you're going to arrive late. Um, when you enter the lobby, um, you can you can see that. It goes up a few stories in the air from the outside um, with the, the sort of glass and steel facade. Um, you can see all the lights coming out from the the interior and this overlay that's multiple layers of these different dancers uh, all layered through the uh, the glass work. Uh, as you move in, you can find you find that there's this huge round uh, sort of reception desk and bar and uh, they ask what's your pleasure um, upon telling them that you were looking for a brother johnson uh the 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 look on their face sort of like goes from this like warm welcoming to this this little bit more cold and stuttered uh, oh okay um you'll need to go to the f the first level below ground and um the door will be on the left. Thank you. I'm going to check everything out in the astral on my uh, approach. Yeah. Um, give me, entrance. Yeah, give me an A sensing. Your research on Dante's. <laughs> uh, so Whipper, you are you find information c concerning uh, basically there was this book uh, written a long time ago uh, about the the different layer circles of hell. Wait, not a glitch. There's no glitch. It's almost a glitch. I want it though. I know there's not enough glitches <laughs> in this game. Um, all right, and so uh, three successes on uh, your a sensing. Uh, the the sort of feel you get as you walk up is these layer upon layer of of washing uh, emotions that sort of uh, like hit you kind of deep in the core of uh, of hedonism and pleasure and. Uh, sort of cutting loose, the sort of like feel of people cutting loose. Um, the the astral here is definitely on the muddied side, um, and you think it's just due to the, based on what you read with three successes, that it's it's due to that sort of reinforcement over time. Um, 
and so you're going to be at a minus uh, one, at least from the outside, but uh, I'll just for the inside baseball, um, you're going to be at a minus two when you're inside Dante's uh, for anything magical. This place is disgusting. Well, somebody's having a good time. Um, uh, you each go to the reception. You, you're able to, to find your way to the room that's uh, dedicated for Brother Johnson. Uh, when you arrive in there, uh, you can see a uh, a male uh, looks looks to be either very elven or somewhere between human and elven. Like he he's got very delicate facial features. Um, his ears are slightly pointed, but there's definitely a rounded cap to them. Uh, he's dressed in this very elegant black suit. Um, and you can tell that there's a, a white part to his collar right below his neck. Uh, looks very fit, uh, trim. And he's like, thank you for answering my call. Um, I'm in need of, I am in need of resources to, to help me track down an item that was stolen many years ago and has just turned up again. Um, I believe that there are those that are using it improperly, and I would like this retrieved within a matter of two days. Uh, for this, I am willing to pay your team, although I know that you have not worked together, uh, I am willing to pay your team uh, 40,000 new yen. Hopefully you will find that to be uh, commensurate with the work that I have for you. And, uh, and he's, uh, he, he says, well, wait, I, I may be jumping ahead. Why don't you introduce yourselves to each other um, to be able to, to help others understand uh, what your skills are so that you can work better as a team? I am Uzziah. Uh, typically, I get called Uz. Uh, I've kind of made my peace with that. Uh, but uh, I I use magic for the healing arts, uh, and uh, I've also been told I have a uh, I have a trustworthy face, so I tend to uh, to to do the talking and handle some negotiations occasionally. All right, uh, Whipper, how about you introduce your character? Oh. Uh... Whipper janders in like everything's just fine and takes a seat and says, oh, I'm Whipper. Uh, looking into things isn't normally my thing, but I have found my, my way around it. And he's this rangy looking guy with a pink mohawk. Uh, and he definitely looks like a ganger of some sort. Curie? Uh, um, Curie uh, has a uh, white lab coat um, that is very stained, <laughs> um, and she uh, she just looks around uh, at everyone introducing themselves, kind of calculating, um, but finally she says, um, um, you can call me Curie, and I can provide magical support. Um, she doesn't really dig in deeper in terms of what kind of support that is. Um, but she just leaves it at that and then looks to the final introduction person. All right, Fade. All right. Um, yeah, ladies who would walk in. Um, dressed up far more than she should be. Um, and she's just saying, hey, yeah, I'm Lady Z. I'm a bit of a journalist, um, but I am extremely lucky. And I like to bring that to the table. Is Lucky a superpower? Um, all right, yes. so... <laughs> uh, after that, he says, well, so um, hopefully uh, you can work exceptionally well together so that we can uh, retrieve this item uh, that has been stolen. Uh, does 40,000 New Yen uh, meet your needs? Um, or do you have any questions? Well, with it, well, that would be the thing. I, there, what is the size of this item we're supposed to retrieve? 
Uh, this item is smaller than a uh, a crate. It is it is something that you could fit in a backpack. Ah, okay. So if you're willing to do that, it's if you're willing to pay that board, it's obviously something very precious. And uh, it sounds like there could be some opposition to that. Uh, potentially. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at dealing with opposition. Uh, and uh, I, I've worked with Glowy Girl here, and he, he vaguely gestures at uh, Curie. And, and she's pretty top top shelf when it comes to finding stuff, uh, you know, to the, the finger wingling bit. I, I think we all rate more than uh, 40 new, grand million type, you know what I mean? All right. And anyone else want to to pitch in? Uh otherwise uh I will do a uh a negotiation uh where uh Whipper roll yours first and uh Okay, I don't know who is actually the face in this group. So I I am, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to roll an assist for you. Uh la Can Lady Z, are you participating? Woo! You get nothing. Oh, yeah, I'll go ahead and throw in the assistance here. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I forgive me for not assisting. Oh, I, I have, have I have antipathy, so I get negative two to all opposed social tests. <laughs> I shut the Ooh. hell up. <laughs> nice roll, lady. Nice roll. Okay. Ooh, nice. Okay. So that gives me how many extra dice? Man, I'm four. Rusty. Four dice plus the limit. Yeah. yeah, up to your yep. limit. Right. So. Okay, so roll. Well, you know, as a CDT agent, you're going to be switching to six head soon. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm, well, it's, I realized it's been how long it's been since I actually did a lot of, I haven't done that much Shadowrun up until recently. Okay, so math hard. Um, okay, so 13. Oh, I'm going to edge. <laughs> uh Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. I, wow, this roll 20 does not like me. I am uh, post edging <laughs> because I can't just. I... It's only 16 failures. It's fine. Yeah, it's only 16. Jeez. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> don't. There you okay, go. Okay. okay. There we go. I just had to. I had to. I had to push push my way through. Uh, uh. So, so you, what, what that tells you is you want to buy two lottery tickets, not one. Yes. Uh, I'm capped at eight successes. Okay. Uh, so um, he 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 watches as each of you bring up very relevant points around uh, having the right team, being able to to go in where it could be dangerous. The fact that he hasn't told you that it's dangerous or not, uh, but it's implied, and the value of the item. And uh, he, he sort of nods as you're going over all the material, and he provides a couple arguments back around the fact that you're a capable team. And says, well, you, you've, bring, you, you've brought up a very good point. I'm, I'm willing to pay 60,000 new yen uh, to your team uh, to re to retrieve this item um, within the next two days. And I'll need it brought to uh, a location of my choosing. Uh, does 60,000 new yen meet with your needs? Yes, I believe that will, that will work for us. Fantastic. Uh, so he uh, looks over each of you and says, there's a book that I need retrieved. Uh, it is located currently in the Redmond Barrens near Glow City. Uh, so, I need this retrieved in the next... Uh, that's I want a Latin name generator. Latin book name generator. <laughs> Not Lipsum. Not Lipsum. <laughs> All I've got for you is Agricola in Wilam Habitat. <laughs> the farmer lives in the farmhouse. 
Pebble generator. Now, I my character actually has Latin, so if you just want to give me what the English meaning of it, which I would then translate to the runners. Uh, servants of ice. <coughs> and I dutifully trans so, translate yeah. that. Um, um, I actually know Glacius is uh, ice in uh, Latin because I use that as one of my spells. <laughs> very cool. For curing. Ah, a, a, a book, yeah. One of those those things. It's got those 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 pieces of of mashed pulped wood with the with the with the the dye on it. Yeah, yeah. True. Right. So you just read up about Dante's Inferno, so he knows all about it. It's, uh, so it's the the book Servants of Ice. I, I need you to retrieve it for me. Um, I don't know where the building is in the, near Glow City. I just know its approximate location. And he sends you over a data file that contains uh, a grid overlay of of old Redmen, along with uh, a rough like probably ten block radius. Uh, this is uh, there is a laboratory located. Uh, below ground in in this area uh, it's being used to conduct magical experiments um and i have concerns that they are doing something that could cause long-term lasting damage and so i would like to retrieve that book servants although serpents of ice would be really good too So, any questions for me? Okay, well, first thing I would do, and I would do this through DNI with someone who would do it, I've got a contact that I would send a text asking him to look up information about this particular uh, book. Oh, what does it look like? Uh, do you have a, like a picture? Because... There's there's all sorts of different types of books. Uh, some of them are kind of big, and and you know some of them are even bound in 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 like leather, and not even synth leather, real leather. He's like, I've got one photo of of this book, and and it's it's it it took a long time to translate from this ancient format JPEG, JPG, um. Let me send this to each of you, and uh, you can tell uh, this. It's and and that will give you a rough idea of what it looks like. And you get this sort of flat image, and it's uh, this leather-bound book, uh, and it looks to be roughly a third of a meter tall, uh, probably a fourth of a meter wide, and fairly thick. Uh, the there, it looks like there's uh, it's. It's got tarnished and bra uh, and uh, trying to find the right word embossing uh, of the letters and it's in Latin and there's this image of a demon on the cover. He's like it is very old. Man, I, I I used to know a guy that had a tattoo like that. Uh, Lady Z, what was that? I was just joking around. Is is the pixelation makes, is it visible through the pixelation? <laughs> Uh, there are some compression artifacts that you notice. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, any questions for me before I let you do your work? Do you have a, a place selected where you want us to drop this thing off and get paid, or uh, is that going to be a big secret? Uh, it's going to be a big secret. Um, I, I'm currently negotiating with a individual to utilize their location. Um, I, I don't find myself in, in Seattle often. Do you know who is running this lab? Yes. <laughs> um, I believe it is as technology. Ah, okay. That's... They're they're always above above board with their experiments. Yes, I I've had uh, it is part of the reason I'm concerned. Um, if it were anyone else, any other megacorp, I would be just as concerned. Um, they all have issues. And. 
Anyone else have any other questions? If not, nope. Not uh, here. You, we've we've got your we've got your contact information for when we find the uh, the thing, and we will we will head out. Excellent. Uh, you may uh, yeah you may reach me at any point. I will have this business line open for the next four days. We will see you within the next two. Excellent. Uh, with that, he sort of uh, does this very formal bow, um, and then exits the room and heads heads out. Okay. So we gotta find this book. This will be fun. Yeah. I love finding physical objects. Yeah, uh, people I, I run with don't me. normally deal in books. Does anyone know anything about the Redmond Barons? Uh, let's see. Let's see, Edel area. I Edel. know quite a bit about the Redmond Barons. That's 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 not too hard to know about. So we found out we have two magic users. Whipper, I've used. I've worked with you in the past, uh, Lady Z. I'm hoping you can provide technical support. Yeah, I've got a bit of a touch with computers. Seattle area Seattle knowledge. Area. Uh, did that wrong, obviously. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. Yeah. Uh... Ah, that's what I did wrong. Okay. There we go. Wow. See, it, it doesn't hate you. It, it just didn't like your initial negotiation. It didn't like your arguments. I should have went with that. Like, your arguments are invalid. Um, <laughs> so, you, you know quite a bit about the area. You know that it is... Uh, very low income, uh, if at all. It's primarily sinless. Uh, some, uh, there is a known dragon that operates out of the area, although, um, for the most part, people have lived and operated in that area with without having too much of an issue. Uh, you do know that the uh, there are a number of groups that have used this area for sort of a, a location of laboratories or or clandestine uh, work. And so that doesn't surprise you that there would be a lab there um, and that as technology would be one that has a lab there. Um, usually uh, a lot of things tend to be non-magical in the area just because of the, uh, the, the pretty large background count that can be uh, found in that area. Uh, Whipper, you get the, the same information uh, in addition uh, you also know that uh, it is the the location that he provided you is on the edge of Glow City, and that the uh, that is awfully close to the Dragon's Lair um, from the the knowledge and rumors that you know of. Ooh, yeah, that's 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 strange. I, I think I know about this place. Uh, it's it's right next to. Uh... Uh, the dragon that uh, she set up shop in in Redmond some time ago. I'm kind of surprised. She normally she's strictly an underworld type dragon. She doesn't own a mega core. Oh, dragons! This is getting better and better. Yeah, I'm not certain sixty is enough anymore. Well, but we could get. I mean, on the on the positive side, maybe she doesn't know that uh, as technology is uh, running in her corner of the world, or maybe she does, and they're just paying her a lot of money. Yorubia is kind of mercenary that way. Uh, so, Uz, your your info broker also. So you give your info broker a quick call while you're you're relaxing in this this room. Um, the room is actually pretty plain and small. Uh, I 
I didn't really describe it as uh, that much before. Uh, the small table, uh, the walls themselves are relatively plain. You think this was the bargain basement version uh, of the okay, yep. business rooms? <laughs> um, w while you're sitting there and they're talking about different things that they know, uh, you, d you give your info broker a quick ring. They say, hey, um, I am familiar with it. It's, but for the most part, like, I, I mean, it depends on what you're you're looking for. Um. Okay. Are you... Here, let me give you the. Let me give you this. Wow. Seventeen dice. I get three successes. Wow. That's okay. It matches the the number yeah. of hits they got. Right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the. Uh... Is there something in particular you're looking for? Like what? what can well, we I'm looking to. I'm looking to know what the book is about and why. Um, the order. The actual order might uh, know about it. They're in. They're in Seattle. Hmm. Or this guy is in Seattle. Yes. Oh, really? That's that's quite interesting. Um. You, you say somebody from the order is in Seattle. Uh, yes. Oh. You do realize, like, uh, they have made enemies. Although, you you have worked with them in the past, have you not? I have, yes. Uh, so you are aware that there is a, a standing bounty for them. Yes, but he's still, they're still, I have certain disagreements with them, but he's still a man of God. I'm not going to turn him in for the bounty. Fair enough. Uh, th that book uh, in particular, um, it is one of the uh, forbidden texts. Uh, however, uh, they were able to destroy all copies other than uh, one known copy, and that known copy disappeared uh, around 60 years ago. Hmm. Uh, well, what, it, well, what it does, I have no idea, or why it's been banned. Okay, well, we'll find out very soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you happen to get a scan of that, I, it's 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 possible I might be willing to provide some compensation if that were to say find its way into my inbox. Okay, I will keep that. I will keep that in mind. So, I relate to everybody else what my info broker told me. It was. It was considered a forbidden text. All other copies of it were destroyed except one that got was lost about 60 years ago. Uh, not sure why it's a forbidden text. And we might be able to make a little extra money too once we get a hold of it. Well, I'm not one to turn down extra money. Well, that's the thing. The guy did not say we couldn't scan it. He didn't. He simply said he wanted it. Yep. Sounds good to me. But that's that's still up in the air. Extra money is always good. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so you have a rough uh, large area to sort of cover in a irradiated zone. Uh, any sort of preparation that you wish to do uh, before heading over? I know it would be disgusting, uh, but as we are preparing to go, I'd like to stop um, a bit a ways and, uh, and search the astral. Um, I know the air is going to be disgusting, but... Um, I'll do a quick search. I think, yeah, I think discovering what the area is aspected for will help us. The good news is other than one that's summoned, spirits aren't going to hang out there on their own. So um, we shouldn't have too much in the astral that's holding us up. Uh, Whipper uh, having 
Ben and the Barons will stop by and get himself a, a mask and a raincoat. <laughs> lead lined uh, lead lined raincoat. <laughs> yeah. Well, He's, he's not really clear on the types of reg, uh, radiation, uh, but he knows that it can sometimes be breathed. So, you know, and he's, he's seen enough after effects of it. You know, the, the, the vagaries of gamma versus theta, et cetera, et cetera. But he knows that breathing the stuff is pretty bad and it's dusty. Okay. Yeah. Um, that. If you were to to go anywhere in sort of the east side of Bellevue or the north side of Bellevue, you would have no problem uh, finding a place that would sell you that equipment. Uh, seems and like either that or just roll someone who's going to a raid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're able you're able to to pick that stuff up. No no problem. Um, new yen wise, uh, it'd probably end up dropping you about 200 new yen to pick up all of the, the right mask equipment and, and raincoat. Okay. Um, if you've got a specific, uh, broker that you like to use, you can potentially get a discount. I imagine you just go to Kong Walmart for a mask and a raincoat. Pretty much. You go to the, uh, the Bellevue Kong Walmart. <laughs> all right. So, um, as you start making your way over towards uh, where Glow City is located, you can see that the, the roads themselves continue to gain additional potholes. The, the sky uh, takes on this, uh, this weird greenish sickly color, uh, sort of reflected off of the, the sodium bulbs from the, the street lamps. Uh, the, it's it's definitely darker. The there's a, a cloud overlay uh, and a smell. It just it sort of feels like it permeates deep inside your nostrils, um, unless you have a reduced sense of smell, then you don't notice. Um, the the air itself feels more humid. Um, <laughs> and stagnant. Yeah. If you've got a gas mask, you would totally not notice. Um, and so yeah, the. Uh, as you as you roll up uh, I ninety towards the the mountains, um, it just feels pretty bad. Uh, are you guys traveling together? I, it sounds like Whipper went separate. Uh, just uh, I I think we would probably just uh, go and collect some stuff and then meet back real quick for to go together. Uh, but the trick is who's who's got the vehicle. That's a fantastic question. That is a good question. Public uh, transit. Yeah, the one time I don't play a rigger. <laughs> I have a Ford Amera car. That's enough for Ford. Oh, there yeah, we go. That, that should be good. Nobody's a troll, right? Or a particularly large or particularly large, no. <laughs> it's a little cramped, but you probably will have no problem fitting in the Americar. You stretch out a little, like, at an angle. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you, you get... Uh, I will take perceptions from everybody in the Americar. Look at that. Some good rolls there. Um, so, uh, Lady Z, Whipper, and Uz, you notice uh, that uh, this motorcycle gang has been... Uh, basically, it looks like five or six motorcycles have, have been following you as you've headed towards the edge of Glow City so that Kiri can do her uh, lookabout. Um, and they've, they've, they picked you up uh, just outside of Bellevue. Um, and at first you felt like nothing was going on because it's it's I ninety it's a it's a major expressway but you've noticed that as you've changed lanes they've they've kept with you um, for Whipper and us you notice that uh, they're a mix of of both orcs and trolls um, but there's something that looks wrong about them that they uh, some of them appear to have 
scales on their face. Some of them have uh, weird dermal deposit growths. Um, and that they're wearing uh, brown and black as their primary colors. Hmm. Let's see. Can I try Seattle gangs to see who they are specifically? Yes, yes, you can. All right. Four successes. Fantastic. Uh, so you recognize them as uh, both of you. Uh, you Oh wait, that's increased reflexes. That is not a gang knowledge. Um, you recognize them as the rusted stilettos. Um, and so that brown is uh, the faded color of their red jackets that have been irradiated. Like you recognize the, the more you look, the more you realize that that is it's it's not really a brown it's a red okay i'm gonna roll ganger activities to see what are the rusted stilettos typically up to this time of year um while that's happening i did not uh notice the 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 tail on us um but do i notice um us casting spells <laughs> uh yes you you would absolutely notice uh so does us do you have a very specific way that when you cast spells that you you sort of either vocalize i honestly would vocalize a prayer so you would hear a prayer at uh come from us and at the same point like you would easily see because you would you were prepping to do astral perception anyway you would see this glow sort of surround him uh, give me an A sense if you can see what he has cast on himself. So ganger activities. You know that typically they, uh, there's, they're insane. They have nothing in the way of a regular activity. They, they have a, a deep need to sort of waylay those that uh, enter into their territory. Uh, and so that's that's primarily it. you know you know that they're they're hostile to all those that come that are not part of their gang. Um, their typical uh, activities generally involve BTL trafficking, uh, smuggling, and uh, other protection schemes with some of the uh, local business. Judge intentions. And I made my um, a sensing too. Oh, perfect yeah, too. So. Yeah, it looks like the rusty slitches are after us. I'm not sure if they're gonna try and jump us when they they catch us at a not certain point, or they're just shadowing us till we leave their territory. At so, that point, okay. I'm gonna summon a spirit. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, Kiri, you would recognize it as a hell spell, but you wouldn't recognize which spell it is. That's fine. Um, I, I wouldn't want to prep increased reflexes anyway, if I'm planning on leaving my body. So, um, but I will, uh, summon ex extra backup. So I'm going to summon, um, you know what? I'm going to do a spirit of air. Okay. What force? Okay. What force? Uh, let's do a force six. <laughs> eh, let's do a force eight. Oh, thank you. Cause. Oh, thank you. Damn. Oh, good. I don't want to see your brain shoot out your nose. <laughs> what you do and don't want to see is not my primary concern. <laughs> I love when criminals get the, get along. Oh. Are you edging or not edging? It's seven edge. We're edging this. <laughs> Oh, Uz, that hurts. It does. There we go. All right, so up to your limit of eight. So you got uh, six net successes. So you have six services of a Force 8 spirit. Um, You will need to resist two drain. Does this sucker manifest uh, physically, or is it still in the astral? Astral to begin with. OK. So I'm guessing, like, Curie's eyes sort of roll back in her head as she's 
informing a spirit of exactly what is needed. So, uh, do we want to just stop and take care of these fraggers now, or or uh, wait till they find the place where they want to hit? That's a really good question. Um, I'm real I'm fast, good though. with now. Uh, does do, does the lead bike have a matrix icon and wireless on, or can I see? Uh, you notice that the the lead bike does in fact, but the rest of them do not. Okay. I'm going to have my one fucking service on the sprite. <laughs> um, the gremlins on the lead bike. I love gremlins. Alright, so it will... It nice? uh, it's matrix resistance. Alright, you got three successes. So I believe that makes it a... Uh a glitch as opposed to a crit glitch yeah just a regular glitch all right so now you just have to make him make a test <laughs> all right <laughs> all right so uh your judge intentions whipper uh you had rolled that earlier uh you believe that they are following you you have no idea if their intention is to drive you out or if their intention is to ambush you like it's it's unclear at this point so yeah, I, so I, I had assumed it would be something like that. So I, my, uh, I, as I stated, I, I, I don't know what exactly they're doing. If they're just following us to make sure we're not interfering in their territory, or they're gonna try and ambush us. It's the rusted slitches. They're gonna do something hostile. So let's just uh, decide whether we want to go now or go later. I say we pick our. I say we pick our battleground. Decide if decide where you like, and then let me know, and I'll uh, I'll do something with the car. I'm sure they're waiting for us to take an intersection where they could cut us off. So I think now is about as good a place as any, unless you see or know of a spot. Whipper, roll me okay. your Redmond, your Baron's knowledge. I think might be, and then I'll, I'll take a perception from us. All right. And then at that point, I'm going to guess that Uz is going to do some sort of fancy drive-in, hang a Louie, and then that will cause the lead biker to glitch. Yes. And uh, I tell the spirit uh, its job is to uh, protect um, the uh, metas here in the van, or here in the car. Okay. Uh, specifically guard power, or that you want uh, you want it? Yeah, we're going to do guard power for right now because we'll see what happens coming up here. Makes sense. So, service that you guys cannot uh, you cannot glitch right now. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, I like glitches. <laughs> Don't be a glitch slitch. Glitching is so much fun. All right, so Baron's knowledge with two hits and then a two on your perception. So as you guys are driving, um, you've just taken sort of that off ramp um, when when you notice they picked you up. Uh, sort of the indicator they were following you. You, Whipper, you know that there's uh, this old like shopping center but it's been long since abandoned that has good sight lines uh located about uh, a kilometer away from where you're at right now but it does take you farther away from where you want to be oh, there's a there's a shopping mall with some good lines of sight about a mile up the road or correction a, a kilometer up the road it's it's not where we're going but it might be a good place to uh to pick a fight with these guys. All right. I would... Uh, then I would step on the gas. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, we were we were driving. They were following us. Everything was casual. <laughs> this point, the speed up. So we're gonna... How far back are they, approximately? Uh, they're pretty close. They've they've been hanging with you probably... Uh, they're They're about 75 meters back from you. Ripper, uh, Ripper pulls out a flash bang grenade and uh, 
pulls the safety off and gets ready to chuck it out the back window. If it looks like they're going to try and catch us. All right, that's four hits on handling. That's the max the Ford Americar has. That's just to take off and speed away from them. Okay. Then when we get to the entrance, assuming they don't do something to stop us before then, when we get to the entrance, another four to do a bootlegger spin. Basically, as they're as they're coming through the entrance, following us, I do a bootlegger spin to force them to try and have to to avoid it to avoid uh, an accident to avoid wrecking their bikes on the car. Mm -hmm. They have to take off and spin off to the side. Okay. Um, and such. Hopefully, hopefully, at least damaging their front wheels on the curbs, whatever the curbs are left, or at least popping up. On them. I imagine they're probably roll rounded over a bit by now, but yeah, they're they're uh, definitely a little bit uh, older bikes at this point. Uh, so what you guys notice is, so you slam on the gas, um, and as as you're looking out the back, um, you see that of the five bikers, four of them sort of surge forward. The other one, which was in the front, like you see this like black billow of smoke just suddenly <laughs> emanate from its exhaust, and then it it sort of like immediately stops like as if something had uh, slammed on the brakes and the the lead uh, cyclist who happens to be this massive troll with these red crystal structures all over his face uh, just sort of launches over the handlebars <laughs> that's bad luck <laughs> uh, I, I say to the um, the spirit I didn't ask you to cause an accident <laughs> uh, the the spirit replies back with it, it that was not me okay, i'm a little impressed <laughs> some people are just done. probably should do that routine maintenance if, if you don't know how to drive it you shouldn't be driving <laughs> All right, so you get to the 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 location. You whip a bootleg uh, turn on it. I'm gonna roll the see if they are able to to meet the uh, the threshold. Uh, they don't. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna roll them all individually so that uh, at least one. Nope. All right. One of them is able to make it, and the others just sort of like keep going down the street. Uh, so you guys quickly pull into that uh, location. You spin the car around. Uh, there's a bike coming straight at you. Th three other bikes are still going down the street. Um, what do you do? It's coming straight at me. Uh, it does appear to be coming straight at you, because you've sort of whipped around, right? You've done a J turn. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, it's, it's, so many choices. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like uh, we're we're not an initiative right now, right? I mean, if you want to be, I can switch it over. But for the most part, Meh. if if uh, this guy's coming at us, can I go ahead and cast an ice sheet? Yes, absolutely. You can cast an yep. ice sheet. I honestly would probably be, I would be swimming. I would be spinning it a little bit to the side so that he bounces off the side of the car rather than hitting his head on and the car being destroyed. Control vehicle so test. I, what? Uh, give me a control yep. vehicle test. Yep. And I'll take a, a cast. What force are you casting at? Uh, let's do. Uh, it's in radi meters, meters radius, right? It is in uh, force in meters radius. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do just a force four. Okay. So, uh, Lady Z, what you see astrally, or not astrally, uh, matrixly, <laughs> is <laughs> that the they do appear to have comms. They each have rating two comms. Um, the one that's made the turn uh, seems to have a gun that actually has smart gun as well. Is it holstered? Uh, it is currently 
uh, you can see it, it's strapped in a holster in the back of the bike, sort of pointed at the ground, or it looks, it's pointed downward. Okay. Uh, ah, let's have fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, hmm, maybe not like, I'll do a level three puppeteer. Okay. Um, to have the gun just fire at the ground. <laughs> just gonna dump that clip right. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, you you recognize the icon as that of uh, an Uzi, so it does have full auto. You can just unload. <laughs> well, it's only three successes. I thought to do five, and I was like, ah. No. So three hits. That's two net. Two net. But that's um, a simple action. Okay, do I have that should be three plus level, so four. So yeah, you can initiate a simple action, which would be a burst. Uh, so full auto, six bullets drop onto the ground. Um, lady, yeah, lady Z, just roll me edge. Just roll you edge, out right edge. Yep. That's close. Enough. I can I can read that. You got one hit. Yeah. Um. So, one of the bullets happens to catch the rear tire, um. As it because you see the biker trying to steer, and that causes that tire to sort of deform a little bit as it hits the ice. Um. Let's see. Uh, where was Tom's roll for? What'd you get for successes? Four, Four successes. Well, I maxed out. I maxed it out. Maxed out the handling on the. Yeah, you have no problem like sort of spinning, which causes him to turn, which causes the bullets to go off, which causes the bike to suddenly like the back tire to deflate as one of the bullets pierces the uh, the sidewall of the tire, and you just see this blaze of sparks and and like trail of melted ice on the ground as the back of this thing goes spinning around and it slams into the side of your car. Ooh. Um, <laughs> It's a Ford America car. They're disposable. <laughs> they, that they are. <laughs> they are. Uh, so he's going to attempt to soak the damage, uh, his bike as well. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, come on, roll 20. Okay. Uh, I did bring enough for everybody if you anybody wants some. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Th thanks. Yeah, the the whole internet loses all the snacky cakes. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, hey, I brought snacks. It's uh it you know, it's just I'm going to have a lot more leftovers now. <laughs> so, uh what ends up happening is it slams into the side. You can see the handlebar deform against uh your vehicle. So, I'll need you to roll a soak on the ve your vehicle as well. Um, this is going to be, uh, six AP minus four. Okay. Um, but you notice that his, his orcish ha head slams against the, the window of your car and he got zero successes. So yeah, he's not looking particularly good right now. Like you can see, like blood is sort of pouring down from the side of his face. How much damage did it do? To him? Oh, uh, sorry. For, it, it's six minus on. four. Six smoke is six with minus four? Okay, yep. yep. You have to roll for it. Okay. Uh, um, where is that? Big money, no whammy. <laughs> no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. <laughs> Oh, it's not a good sign. Whatever roll twenty, is it thinking? Takes its time. It's thinking. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, there we go. You soak it. I soaked it. So yeah. the paint scratched, of course, but yeah, paint scratched. His bike is bent. Doesn't look like it's going to be well. Broken tire, broken handlebar. Um, you can spot down the street that the others are starting to make their turn at this point. Um, he does not look good. What do you guys do? Well, that's two. Are we at a complete stop now? 
you, he slammed back on the gas and he started to head back out of the parking lot. Uh, that said, it's up to you guys if you want to make any sort of modifications there to the to the plan. Well, keep going and try and wh whittle them down one at a time or uh, stop and talk. Uh, rather just take them down and then talk to the survivors, if there's any. Curie, do you have something big and flashy that would uh, make them think twice about following us, possibly? I mean... I suppose so, but I feel like with um, this guy running, we may have made our point already. The point I, is I, I, the car is cursed for him. <clears throat> okay, I drive. I drive out. Drive out and back out onto the the street. They're they're coming back towards us. Yeah, the coming back is bare headed towards you, the remaining three. The other one doesn't appear to be able to get his bike back moving. Okay. Uh does it try and drive away? Do they try and follow us again? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I stand corrected. I was hoping you were right. I really was. I really don't you had... I didn't do I didn't get into doing this to uh just you know bash around stupid people. Whipper, you've you happen to have a flashbang ready. I do, but I have not pulled the pin, and I'm getting the feeling that with the amount of finger wigglers in the car and the rather suspicious way that one of the bikes basically imploded that it's just not gonna be necessary. So Whipper just kind of visibly relaxes and, and resets the safety wire on it, and puts it back, and just looks around. It's like, okay. Yeah, sort of All lean right. back and hold your arms. <laughs> I, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I was clearly wrong, so we're going to end this quickly. I'm going to go ahead and cast um, a... Level five ice storm. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. And if that doesn't say fuck you, I don't know what it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what type of spirit do you have? Spirit of air. Okay, so you have a force eight spirit of air with five remaining services. Yeah, but I want to be able to say fuck you to all of the ones chasing us. Well, uh, I want to say this spirit that it has uh, two additional optional powers for a spirit of air yeah, at Force air Eight. At force eight. Yeah, I right. have it. I, honestly, I was going to run it without just because I don't have those rules in front of me. Uh, and so things that might be useful are like the exotic weapon. Uh, I believe there's an area effect to that. It could freeze up either the lead one or it could freeze up because it does have a sort of frost elemental ability or lightning uh, generally is what you'll see out of a spirit of air they asked for flashy we'll go with the lightning then <laughs> so lightning will suddenly strike from the sky which is probably where the spirit is sort of following along and strike the bike or maybe through the guy into the bike all right uh so you command your spirit uh that lead one uh, lightning bolt to the head. Uh, roll me uh, two times the force. And we're going to say he doesn't see it coming, so this is unopposed. <laughs> Eight successes. Uh, so you see this massive... Uh, what color bolt? Describe the bolt for me. I'd say it's uh, that... that purple energy with like just a little bit of yellow on the edge of the vis of your vision for just a second yeah and it's 
it's thick too, right? Like it's probably about as big around as a th- as a person's thigh, and it just like strikes down as a column from the sky, striking this this troll who has a uh, metal implement sort of rigged up through the the horns. It looked like razor wire, and you just see like it's almost like lightning going down the horns into this this poor troll's skull. Uh, let me go roll his uh his resistance. He has body eight, and he uh, he had armor that does not do any good. Come on, roll twenty. Come on. He soaks four of the the sixteen damage. Um. Yeah, you just you know you watch as this troll gets blown off the bike. The bike itself goes a different direction, and it takes out both of the other two gangers. Um, as as this massive troll and this massive like troll bike uh, strike them down, um, there's this ozone smell to the air as well. I feel like that was the equivalent, uh, or, or, or like the exaggerated version of hitting him on the nose with the the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> <It's> a, no. <laughs> no. Uh, if you are looking astrally, you will notice that his aura winks out. Oh, wow. Nice wow. shot. <laughs> yeah, I expect to be a to troll to at least survive, but... He, yeah. he had already been uh, slightly damaged before. Oh, right. He had an accident. <laughs> so. Thank you, Curie. That, uh, that would have been annoying to have to have them just keep snipping at our heels. So uh, I will take a drive casual as you attempt to look like a uh, uh, a resident of the Barrens as you want to head towards a place to set up for Curie to do her research. Wow. Okay, I typed that in the wrong spot. Twitch does not handle roll commands. Who knew? <laughs> I'm thinking everybody did, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it does uh, tend to. All right. So you've got four successes. Um, to to drive casual. Uh, you were able to uh find sort of a side street that you it looks like your car will sort of blend in. You make sure that the uh, scratch side is street side so people see it. Um, yeah, so it blends in now. Exactly. Like, that's your, your sort of disguise kit for your car. Uh, and so, yeah, you, you're able to pull over, and you all get sort of the ability now to, to dig in, see if there's anything you can see. Um, your on the edge of the radius that you were provided by Mr. Mr. Johnson. Okay. I'm uh I'm going to switch astral while at least looking in the astral while Curie is doing her research just so that since you're hopping out of your body so that I'm walking around I'm looking around for astral stuff in our area and if you guys can keep an eye on the mundane, we'll have everything covered. Sure, let me, uh... Yeah. Whipper will get out of the car and start smoking. Just lean up against the car and just start smoking. Um, um, as I go full astral, I'm going to go in a grid pattern um, to, like, just shoot through um buildings and kind of get a lay of the land um see any areas that might be um populated like the lab setup kind of thing i know it's in the basement so i might try to like as i get into buildings and stuff like that i might try to drop into the floor and see if the earth stops me or not um and see what i can find awesome and then fade you had mentioned you were you're going to take either a look in the matrix or visual yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, just kind of slouch out and close my eyes as I drop into hot sim real fast and do some matrix perceiving. All right. So, 
Kiri, I'll take uh, an Astral Perception, so give me a good old-fashioned A sense then. Got two successes on A sensing. Yeah, let's uh, post edge that. Whipper is going to give me a regular perception potentially. Yes. All right, so three hits on A sensing. Double filtered cigarettes, yes. <laughs> uh, all right, so the A sensing test. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, your A sensing test, uh, you uh, you are able to identify that the background count feels toxic, um, as you kind of anticipated, um, and that the the background count is four. Ouch. Um, and you can see these glowing figures moving about in the distance. Um, you recognize them as spirits of radiation. Gross. All right, Whipper, uh, looking around, um, you notice that there are people that do live in the area. You do see them moving about. Um, they look like about the most destitute uh, downtrodden that you've seen uh, in any of the barons. Um, you you don't make out anybody wearing uh, like gang colors or anything along those lines. You are able to uh, see that they've taken sort of an interest in your vehicles um, and, the, and you. Uh, you're dressed definitely much nicer than they are, uh, but they quickly identify you as a threat and move away. Smart move on their part. And then Lady Z, as you look astrally, uh, you can see uh, what looks like a faint uh, hidden icon off in the distance, about three blocks away. Um, it's very, very faint. Uh, but it, it doesn't, Ooh. it looks unusual. I mean, you see other things like uh, old toasters, you see uh, some cheap comms in the area. Those things are easy, but that, that looks interesting. Okay. Alrighty. I am going to uh, thread up a crack sprite. Well, not thread up, I guess, but I'm going to compile up a crack sprite here. Let's see. What's that sprite's called? This one will. Crack sprite. I think I've got specialty for those. Wow. Oh wait, no, that was the previous five successes. <laughs> yeah, I wish that was my. Uh, uh what level crack spite was it? Yeah, it's gonna be a. Level... Sorry, I missed that. That's no, gonna be a level five. Okay. There we go. Look at that four oh. four net. Yep. Four net. Oh, that's the crack spite I can actually use. Um. And then I'll do level three um, resonance Velda or static Velda. Keep it off the radar. Okay. So you're able to to summon up this crack spite. What is like? What does your crack spite look like? Uh, that is actually really good to ask. Uh, what's that? Um, let me think. It looks, uh, remember, like, in, uh, you know, like, how, like, those, like, kind of, like, glittery, it's kind of like a, like, shiny, kind of glittery star, like a spiky little star kind of look. Okay, so sort of like a floating asterisk, three-dimensional asterisk? Yeah, basically that. 
Okay. As long as it's not a paperclip. <laughs> uh, not yet. <laughs> That's the big false spray. <laughs> 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 All right, so cool. Um, you're able to to summon this up. Um, available for five uh, for four four ser five services. No, uh, no, it's four. I right, so that limit was five. Oh, okay. Unless, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. And software plus residence. I'm done. Uh, so you're able to uh, resist double. fade. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I, I still gotta do that. Oops, let me do that. So you got two fade. All right. So while uh, Lady Z is taking care of fade, um, uh, probably about that time, uh, Kiri, you've you've arrived back in your body with the information that you've retrieved that there does appear to be uh, floating spirits of of radiation. Um, which you would know are corrupted spirits of fire. Um, you also saw uh, that it's thick and morass. Um, the, you believe that uh, it would be just a terrible idea to do any sort of magical research here. <laughs> yeah, um, I, no idea why they chose to this location for magical research unless um they have their facts wrong so um it's terrible it's going to be uncomfortable for for us to fight um and difficult to push through the toxicity uh in the astral but um we'll do what we can yeah and, and us was able to keep guard during that time period and ensure that yeah Nothing seemed to come astrally towards uh, your group during that time period, um, but you can also get the same sense that this is r just wrong. There's a sickly sort of uh, feel about the area when you look astrally. Yep. All right. So what's the plan? Sounds like Lady Z has some info. Yeah. I was actually gonna dive a little bit further towards that um towards that, that uh matrix icon if i could okay are you sending a message know. over uh, uh, yeah i sent a comment message uh interesting um icon ahead i'm digging into it do you need me to drive over there uh, would it hurt Kiri, you're back, yeah, right? No. Yeah, otherwise, uh, talking while in the astral is a new skill I picked up. <laughs> I yeah. just like to make sure. Well, Whipper, uh, here's here's the DNI, and he uh, he chucks his cigarette and gets back in the car. And I'll uh, send uh, coordinates to, or coordinates close to that location. Awesome. I, I just thought this would be a bad place for you to have to haunt for the next couple of days <laughs> until you until your spirit dissolves. <laughs> okay, and so I think that puts us at right around a good break point. So we're going to take a, a five minute break. Okay. Um, that way, folks can use the restroom. Uh, we will be back at. Um, I'm going to give things in West Coast time because it's easier for me. Uh, we'll be back at 12:30 uh, Pacific time. Um, oh, we need 10 minutes. 12.35. 12.35. Oh, or 2.35 if you're Central. 3.35 if you're Eastern. Uh, right. So we will be right back. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and we'll keep we'll keep having the good time. Uh, don't forget, uh, actually, I'm going to let Eric uh, talk a little bit about a book. Um, so if any of the players need to, to bounce uh, for a bit, go ahead and do that. Eric, why don't you tell me about the book? Uh, yes, uh, promoting a book by Roz Savage. Uh, she rode across the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Actually rode, like in a big rowboat. Uh, fully stocked, all muscle power. Uh, she was alone on the ocean for 
months at a time. So in response to the Corona apocalypse, she has written a book called The Gifts of Solitude, which is available on Amazon uh, for like uh, $3 and, and 89 cents, if I recall correctly, less than $4, uh, $8 and some change hard copy. It's very good. Uh, if you are trying to cope with being alone most of the time, uh, which is really hard if you're an extrovert, uh, and I found it even as an introvert very challenging, it's well worth a buy. So definitely take a, take a look at it. And I am going to go take my break, and I'll be back with everybody else. Awesome. So I am going to put a link for that book into the chat. Um And uh, we'll see you back shortly. All right, we're back. Thank you for uh, letting us take a break. We need more commercial breaks, though. <laughs> um, so where we left our, uh, off was the crew was just outside of Glow City. They were driving in towards this mysterious matrix signal while Lady Z was preparing to uh, use her army of m awesome sprites to help her in discovering what the heck is going on. Let's pick up there, Lady yeah. Z. What's up? Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess right now the objective is just approaching this um, um, icon. Do yeah. I get any additional visual from it yet? Or? Yeah, give me a matrix perception. Um, that said, where you're at, the noise is uh, at a three. Um, due to distance, due to the fact that this is a sort of legacy matrix zone. Okay. Uh, so that's a what? Take three dice to win? Or is it... I forget how noise affects me. It should be a minus three dice. Okay. Oof. All right, um, let me, uh, yeah, I'll do that for, probably should have done it the other way around. Uh, did you put it in the roll 20? Yeah, there it goes. I'm gonna, yep, gonna just, uh, edge three of that. Oh, okay, so you're pre-edging or post-edging? Yeah, uh, post, post-edge. Well, you might as well, rather than I use re-rolls, if you just used your edge, it'll be seven, and then sixes explode, right? Because you're lucky. Yeah, I can still just, uh, but, yeah. So let's roll the other, or... I would roll seven rather than roll three, or roll what your edge rating is. Okay. And six, six is explode, so, just, so. Okay. So I'll just do that. Okay. Check my edge. That'll at least give you the best bang for your dice. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I, yeah. At that point, I probably should have done that, but it didn't really matter anyway. Um, what you're able to tell is it looks like it's a, uh, some sort of device. It looks like an RCC that's been adapted, uh, to run silent. Uh, and so, and so you recognize that at least the, the matrix symbol, symbology on it, um, it looks like it's, it's got the as technology brand attached to it. Okay. And I'll uh, shoot a text to the rest of the team uh, as the RCC looks like running silent. All right. So uh, does it have drones hanging off of it? There is oh, no drone sure. icons off of it. Instead, there are other devices hanging off of it. No drones, but uh, it looks like an elevator and two mag locks are attached to this RCC. And uh, yeah, it looks like um, elevator, two mag locks. Let's 
Isn't that a str I'm not a tech person, but isn't that a strange use for I'm an like a devil rat staring at a com link here. It, something's going on, but I don't know. What. <laughs> um, so Lady Z, uh, just for me, like, do you have any sort of matrix knowledges? Uh, uh I hope I. That's a good question. Uh, well, see. you know, some people live on the Matrix, but they don't they don't really study it. I mean, there's always that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the situation here. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, like... No, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, the closest I have is, like, com Renraku Computer Systems or Business. Like, those are, that's not as close as it uh, I'll take Renraku Computer Systems. Uh, at a minus two. So that's, uh, minus two? All yep. right, seems legit. Four successes. Oh, um, you have you've seen uh, cases where uh, when they don't really have a host available, that you've seen people set up either RCCs or other devices similar uh, as a sort of mini host, um, as sort of that bridge between last gen's weird technology and and the current gen host set. So yeah, I'll just kind of relay like uh, it's a bit of a rudimentary system, perhaps no host, and a fingers crossed emoji. I was would a Sasquatch that has matrix skills would it only communicate in emojis? <laughs> Sorry, it's just really blurry. <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, you guys get closer to the location. Uh, Lady Z, you can see that the noise has gone down to two as you get closer. And uh, what you see from the outside in the physical realm, uh, Uzziah, Whipper, and Kiri, is you can see a a squat building. Um, it The building itself looks mostly intact, um, it, but you can see that there's a door on it with a, a mag lock actually on the do door with a light flashing. Um, the building itself looks sort of stucco and brick. Uh, very grimy. Um, there's sort of this black charredness around it, uh, and you can see that the uh, the the place is a little bit on the rough side. So, if you want, you can do some additional rolls, uh, Lady Z. If you're interested, you can also you notice at this point, yeah, it's at a minus two. Um, I'd like to scope this particular place out in the astral awesome are you going to go into it or are you going to just outside perimeter um after being in it before i feel icky like i need a sh astral shower so i'm going to ask my spirit to um kind of give me the rundown and a sense any auras and let me know if there's any spirits and all that stuff so you're going to send you're going to send the spirit in and you're going to stick around and in, in the car yeah. Okay, roll me okay. a sensing for the spirit. Utilize that uh that you know, uh mental link. <laughs> All right, Whipper does a quick scan of this sort of weird building. Um you can see that there are uh fairly well-crafted cameras sort of set up. Um, in between the bricks mortar as you do a quick scan of it oh yeah yeah this is uh i don't know i don't know if we found the right place but we definitely found a place they got cameras built into the building where you can't really see any look at that corner you see the little glint there that, that's not glass definitely not graffiti And are these visible in the matrix as well at this point? Uh, does not appear so. Um, when you did a quick scan over it, you didn't see it. Uh, it might be hardlined somewhere else. Okay. Uh, okay. In fact, now that you're closer, okay. give me another matrix perception since you have one less noise and sure. you're just parked outside. Sure. Alrighty. 
Oh, right. I'm holding a, a complex form as well. Oopsie. <laughs> so let me. Computer intuition. So, Kiri, that was eight dice. You should roll me another eight. Oh, oops. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. I mean, it can only get better, right? Unless you roll all ones, and then it can only get worse. <laughs> Nine successes. Awesome. Uh, so you, what your spirit uh, goes in and does a quick look about and says, "Hey, there's nothing. There's nothing on the first floor. Um, instead, I noticed a deep shaft going underground, but I felt uncomfortable going down there." That was a lie. That was a lie. Um, and you get that was a lie, yeah, that was a lie. Um, but yeah, you uh, basically says that it recognized that there was a ward over the top of the elevator shaft. Right. Um, all right. So despite um, uh, the, the the astral uh, being a terrible place to do any magical experience experiments here, there is a ward. Um, in that elevator. Uh, so, Lady Z, as you do a quick scan around the the area matrix, um, you notice that there are there's really not that much in the way of matrix signals up top, but you do notice the a faint hint of something below ground. Okay. That's okay. Trying to decide how I want to play this now, because <laughs> I have I I, I kind of want to get into that RCC, but <laughs> so many options. <laughs> Actually, I'll just uh, oh, hold on, let me check my sprite powers on crack sprites real quick, maybe. Okay, uh, so Tom with us. Uh... Are you going to park the vehicle like around the block? Like, are you trying to aim it to be further away from the the camera laden building? Yes, I am not. I am not going to park it near the. I'm not going to park it in view of the cameras. Okay. Yeah, you're able to find a spot, uh, basically a block away. So you're about 120 meters away from the building at this point. Okay. You said there's a ward on the elevator. Yep. Do we want to go in? I, unless um, Lady Z can uh, give us any more intel on the inside, I don't know what else we're going to find from out here. Unless we, we can always um, find a spot to just sit and watch and see if there's any comings or goings, and we can always try to get more information that way, but... So you know that there's a force... Uh, the, so this is something I've, I, The spirit would have told you it is a Force 8 ward. Alright. So it's a decently strong ward. So there has to be a magic user here somewhere to put it in place. And Lady Z, you'd mentioned you popped out a hot sim at this point, or? Yes, yes, I'm popping out a hot sim. And possibly that same magic user could be continually cleansing it to keep the background count from affecting things. Unless they're, Unless they're... tainted to it, connected to this. They're asking to do with the background. To successfully cast a, a Force 8 ward in this kind of noise, yeah, they have to have some kind of. Um, they're either powerful or have to have some kind of assistance. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Yeah, I could probably get the door and elevator working. Little stuff. You can't really uh, see much further down. Can't see any cameras or anything down there. Uh, not yet. Let me give me one moment. Let me see what I can dig into here. And, right. Uh, I'm gonna send my crack sprite fetch to do the hacking for me. Okay. It is a bit better equipped. Um, it's gonna be more hack on the fly. Crack sprite hacking. So. Hey, I, uh, I saw a trid some years back where. Uh... Guy with a computer just like hooked his 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 brain or his his uh, deck thing into an item, and they could just kind of jump into the the matrix and start controlling stuff. Can you can you do that? Ah, uh, kind of. But I got a I got a little bit different way I go about things. Oh, uh, okay. Hopefully it will look out. Fingers crossed. Uh, your your sprite fails to get a mark. What? Damn. That's harsh. Okay. Um. Are you looking at the sprite? Options. Are you looking at the sprite? Yes, I am looking at the sprite. Uh, you would be able to buy hits. Um, you see a mark on the sprite. Ooh. Huh. Oh, that's it, spicy. It looks like a, looks a, like step, a... a step pyramid. <laughs> What's that? It looks like a step pyramid. Oh, okay. Classic Atlan. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, that did um, no, that's a residence action, not a matrix action. Okay. Um, I'm just going to puppeteer it then. Okay. Um, uh, if you want, you could probably take the time to, to clean your sprite uh, to remove the mark. Um, that's just. Oh, yeah. I should probably do that. Yeah, I should probably clean that off before I get too dippity. Okay. Uh, software boss resident. giant set of filing cabinets with a security cat standing on top of them. Security cat. That's my favorite cat now. <laughs> Trying to visualize what that uh, looks like. I'm also going to drop um, static veil at this point. Okay. So you're sort of letting the letting the the sprite accumulate some uh, OS so that you can yeah. so I can focus. focus on more important things. Yeah, it's gotta right. be fast. Like, all right, good buddy, you've been really useful, but uh, good luck. <laughs> Don't snitch on me. <laughs> uh, Whipper, you're standing outside the location. Um, Actually, I'm still in the car because we drove up, we we saw it, and we drove off to one side to scope it from afar. Uh, Whipper has not decided he wanted a cigarette just yet. Okay. But he will soon. All right. Uh, anybody else? Uh, anybody else is up to something while... Uh, your resident matrix expert is uh, sort of peeling back the layers. 
Honestly, just kind of looking around, making sure that nobody's taking an interest in us. Oh absolutely. oh, absolutely. People are taking an interest in you. Like, your car at this point, like, you're you're a few blocks into Glow City. Uh, yours stands out as the nicest car anybody's <laughs> mm -hmm. seen in a while. A whipper gets out of the car and uh, approaches the nearest person. Hey, uh, you Bob? I was told to look for Bob. Bob has the good stuff. Uh, all right, roll me uh, etiquette. <laughs> etiquette or con? Are you actually attempting to buy the good stuff? No, but I want to make it look like that's why we're here. That would be a con. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're never quite. I, I'm never quite sure with Shadowrunners whether it's actually buying drugs or pretending <laughs> to buy drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't it be both? You're pretending, but then... Oh, wow, okay, you got some? Sure. <laughs> Alright, so we had exploding sixes on Puppeteer with five. It gets to roll its resistance. Oh, uh, that's resisted by Will and Firewall, I believe. Yeah. Sorry about that. The stream has suffered some minor difficulties due to Comcast being overloaded, at least in the West Coast. Yeah, there's there's some kind of issue. The web's a little bit slower for me on this end of the coast for some reason. Yeah, it's been definitely overloaded. Uh, so, it's, so you did a search for... Um, yeah, so give me a roll, Tom, on your safe house's knowledge. Two successes. Alright, so with two successes, uh, you know that there are safe houses. The ones you're more familiar with are outside of the Barrens. They're located in Bellevue. Right. Uh, best case, you could probably get East Bellevue or North Issaquah. Is that going to be a long walk for us? Oh yeah, it's a long walk. Yeah. Uh Except for a Force Except 8 for Spirit of Air. Yeah, I was just about to uh, pipe in. Um, let's um, get somewhere off the beaten path. And, uh, yeah, we all run at full movement. I was thinking more concealment of the car nearby. <laughs> <laughs> I, either um, one's fine by me. Maybe both. That's two services, though. You have two left, let's... if I remember, if I'm counting right. Um, Uzzy, um, she kind of like wrinkles her nose at saying that name. <laughs> um, let's, um, find us a quiet place off the beaten path to leave the car. Okay. I, uh, inside the Barrens, or you want me to get out of Glow City? Somewhere nearby. Okay. I drive around casually uh, looking for a cave to park the Millennium Falcon that hopefully doesn't have a giant space slug in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're able to find uh, the sort of burnt out house and the husk of a garage that the garage door is sort of hanging sort of cockeyed a little bit um, that you can probably find a way to get in there and push it up um, uh, Lady okay. Z is able to do sort of a quick matrix uh, look over it and it looks like there's nothing going on in there alright All right. All right. Um, All right. I'll, tell, I'll tell the spirit to uh... <laughs> don't you go try and talk about being you know, casual and sneaky we're discussing how to properly bash, how to properly kick the door in. We can make the lights flash too if you really want. Okay, so it's, I had a couple sh glitches in the uh, the stream, so it's it's back up and running at this point. Fingers crossed. For those of you watching, we have parked the car in a in, in a garage, a hidden, concealed it, and are now discussing. We're trying to find a place to lay low and watch it, and then discussing how to properly open the door. 
the so, Matrix support what? has some idea about just opening it, and whereas me and Whipper are debating, you know, how to properly smash it open. Well, I mean, you know, if if Fade can can get it open, I mean, that makes things a little easier. I mean, uh, the only other thing I got is the pizza delivery idea. So, so Kiri, I will take a uh, a concealment test. So it'll be sixteen dice uh, for your spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Where this Ford Americar is going. So, how new of a Ford Americar is it? Us. Um, actually, it'd probably be a new one. All right. Uh, I mean, he's driven it around. He's driven it around Seattle too much, but he hasn't. He hasn't ran that much. All right, uh, so you are able to conceal it. Right. So we'll, we'll leave the uh, knocking down doors for plan uh, C. Um, let's start with uh, some watching <laughs> and waiting. In the meantime, uh, uh, I'm forgetting, uh, I, I keep wanting to say fade, Miss Z. Lady Z. Lady Z. Lady Z. Um, I, you can tell what screen I don't have open. Um, so oh, Lady right. Z, keep uh, searching for um, what we can do. Plan B will be that you let us in the front door. Um, but so we'll you're gonna start with watching <laughs> and see if we can obtain some extra intel from obtaining someone coming and going. Uh, so you're able to see there's nobody uh, so you tell me how much time you're gonna invest into that um what time of day is it right now you met up at eight you head straight over it's probably 10 or 11 p.m yeah. okay um so let's let's just watch through the night and see like about quote work time so like 9 a.m or something like that let's see uh if nothing happens, if there's no com comings and goings by then, we'll start moving toward plan B. Uh, I grab two survival kits so we can kind of trade on and off with people getting a chance to sleep. All right, so you're able to, to get some non-restful sleep through the evening as uh, you do trade-offs and shifts to, to keep an eye on the, the lab. Um, you are, so you're doing puppeteer on which one? No, I was um, resisting my fade for that. Oh, okay. I forgot to do that. Ah, right, good call. Uh, so you, uh, so as you watch the place overnight and then into what would be normally work time, um, you don't really see much in the shift in the way of traffic. Um, nobody has come or gone into the building. Uh, you've noticed in general that people avoid that side of the building. You don't really see anybody walk on that side of the street. Um, the ones that are on that side of the street will move to the street and walk down the middle of it uh, when they go around the building. Um, but nobody comes or goes from it. Um, and you watch until probably about 10 a.m. You know, maybe they've got some late risers that work there. That they work in the tech industry or something. Um, but yeah, you, you don't really notice anything. All right, I guess it's plan B. Um, Lady Z, open the door. I think we are ready to go in and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss my uh, my sprite that I've seemingly forgotten about. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's after sunrise, so I have to read summon a spirit, right? Yep. What force? And I imagine you'll want to get another sprite as well. Yeah, I might as well knock that out now. We're gonna go four six right now. So four six, and what level? Uh, level. I'm gonna do level four. Uh, so you attempt to summon forth a spirit, and it resists you. It says, "I'm sorry, I'm not willing to help you." I didn't even roll. Oh, you didn't? Who rolled? <laughs> oh, that was Lady Z. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, right. damn. Right. They're just like, don't even want to deal with you. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have a minus four, but that doesn't take me into the negative. <laughs> All 
All right, so the f the level four crack sprite, you get two net services, uh, resist two fade. <laughs> Actually, yeah, they do tell you that. You got three successes, got three successes. and I got three successes. Well, well I'm gonna post that, so bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Suck it. the problem is I, I see out of the corner of my eye, I can see like roll 20 flicker and I look over and I see a new like successes. And I was like, oh, okay. You got three successes. I got three successes done. Um, so yes, you're able to get, uh, you're able to get three services. Um, you'll have to resist, have to resist three, uh, three. not fade, drain. Done. Yeah, drain. rocket awesome so uh you've got a new spirit you've got a new sprite and you're holding on to a puppeteer oh no i was i don't think i could hold puppeteer but um i did just leave my marks there and i didn't yeah. res i didn't reset myself overhead so unless someone saw it well we'll find out we'll find out if, if my marks are still there <laughs> You do a quick look, your marks are no longer there. Okay, fair enough. Damn, they know you. Oops. Maintenance, damn it. All right. I'm just done. Uh... Open the duel. Oh, right. and to prep for this, I'm going to also cast increased reflexes. <laughs> Force it. Don't forget to take the, the background. Yeah, normally it's 19 dice. I rolled 15 dice for the spirit, so I'm rolling 15. Yep. And uh, what's the background what's count? The, uh, four. Four? Four. Oh. Oof, that is some spicy stuff. What's the um, What's the mechanism for these mag locks? Is it just uh, a key card? Or... It's a keypad. Touch... So. Keypad? Okay. Alright. Um. I'll walk up to the keypad. I'm going to go ahead and uh, resonance veil mm -hmm. to uh, to make it think that I put the right card. As soon as I move my roll bar. It's all the same roll. Taking my drain, too. Okay. okay. Once done. Yeah, increased reflexes is a bit brutal. <laughs> so you got your resonance you reel going? It's so worth it, though. It yeah. is so good. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, you can see this keypad. You can see that it's attached to that, that RCC. You've got your resonance fail going. Did it take my uh, code to call it? To... Yes, yes, it did. Okay, I'm gonna say open says me. <laughs> and you see it flicker from red to green, and you hear the the distinct l l uh, magnetic release. And, uh, who, and uh, who who opens the door? Who? It's unlocked. It's unlocked. I'm squishy. I do not go fast ever. <laughs> Is it open inward or outward? Uh, it opens outward, like any good so, OSHA door. Whipper will stand opposite of the doorknob and reach across the door and jerk that sucker open. So whatever bullets fly out of it are just gonna fly by. Just gonna stay clear from the door. All right, so you whip that sucker open and nothing happens. Um, you see like a, a flickering incandescent, or not, uh, a fluorescent bulb start to flicker in the room as it turns on. Uh, so light sort of floods out a little bit. And so peeking around the lower edge of the corner, he takes a look down the hallway. Yeah, you look in, and it looks like this room has sort of been cleared out. There's debris piles along the edge of the the room, um, but it's just one big room, and then there's sort of this centralized brick 
uh, column in the middle. Uh, and it looks like there's a, another keypad on that area. This is supposed to be the elevator. Uh, give me a perception <laughs> test. Oh, definitely. Okay, you notice that there's something odd about the floor. Mm, there's something weird about that floor. Um, like, it looks like there's some sort of uh, layered mesh or something laid across the floor. Yeah, that, that, that mesh doesn't look good. Does it look like it's made out of metal? Yes, it does. Um, it's about it's about two meters by four meters, um, and sort of laid along outside where the door is into the room. Does it completely cover the the, end, the floor in the entire room? Nope, just a two meter by four meter section. So, um, okay, you can go around it, but it will take a, a gymnastics test. Hmm. I wonder if it's electrical. Um. You can roll me security knowledge. Me what, it will take me um, a hot moment, but I could just carry each of you across. Cast a force, force to levitate for everyone. Yeah, no, that would work as well. I'm good with it. All yeah, right. It we cast it five, four times. Four times. I can count. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're able to get into the building. Um, I will let you do the four casts if you want, um, just to keep the story moving. Uh, so as she casts and get gets everybody across, um, you find yourself in this room. Um, you find another keypad. Um, feel free, uh, Lady Z, give me another uh, Resonance Veil as you... Open says me on the door. Uh, um, and you will find right. an elevator. An elevator. Funny oh, is delaying. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, gonna. Ooh. actually, did we get the edge back over? No edge because of the poor night's sleep. Yep. Fair enough. Oh man, two edge left. <laughs> How much is that? That's two six. I need it. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post edge that. So seven. If I can. Sorry, I'm rolling so much. I'm trying to get on my drain too. So. No, that makes sense. I'm. So you got two, uh, two and two for your edge and post edge. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Not the most optimal. Yeah, open says me. the The door opens. You see that elevator shaft, and you're able to to see it. You see a shaft, but no elevator. Hmm. Correct. Yeah, you see cables going down. Um, uh, how far is, uh, down is the ward if I turn on astral vision? Uh, you can see it right, like, almost like a f extension of the floor. Frick. All right, um, Ozzy, uh, we need to drop all spells we're maintaining before we go through. Turn off focuses if you have them. Yep. Is there a call button for this elevator? Oh, uh, there is not. Ugh. Uh, but you did remember that it was attached to the RCC, so... Oh, right. Okay, um... <sighs> shit. Alright, um... 
Crack Sprite, go. Uh, I'm going to send... Oh, actually, no, the Crack Sprite failed last time. But it's fine. Uh, I'm going to do quick level three static veil drill. Okay. Um, another thing that would be useful... Yeah, it has definitely been slow. Uh, another thing that might be useful is also give me a matrix perception test as well. This is more for a future right. role. Um, okay. Uh, so what's the plan, uh, Curie and, and Uz? Are you dropping any sustained spells? I'm dropping my uh, uh, focused uh, concentration. Or, I'm sorry, uh, my... Uh, Increase reflexes. Increase reflexes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I'm actually not sure how this works because I can't remember, but I'm going to tell my spirit to stay up here. Um, and hopefully the, the connection doesn't get severed. I don't think it... I don't know. We'll find you, out. You don't lose serv you don't you don't lose the services, so when you it's when you can communicate with it again. Uh, guard uh, the elevator. And I'm dropping this my box. Okay. And the limit is five. Either four or five for the sprite. Okay, and the sprite got four. Yes, it gains a mark. Okay. Uh, can I summon the elevator with one mark? Yes, you can. Uh, so I you notice that the uh, elevator starts coming up. Uh, so elevator arrives. Ding! Um, it looks fairly plain. Um, in fact, it looks pretty industrial. When you when you pop it open, um, nobody inside. Um, although that said, it's clean. When it's when you look inside, the outside of it looked industrial. The inside of it looks sterile. White panels, <laughs> white floor, everything is scrubbed. Yeah, disinfected. Has yep. a has that odor that they regularly clean it and disinfect it. Yep. Definitely so, looks like this would be a lab elevator. Yeah, so all of a sudden you've gone from, like, is this the wrong place? Has security, but still feels wrong, too. Mm, this seems much more plausible. What do you guys do? Step in. Yeah, that's about like, uh, we're riding an elevator. Better than jumping down an elevator. Well, didn't we have to, we had to get floated over, we had to get floated over a grid, right? You already did that. Okay. Yep. So, uh, Curie had done all those rolls on the side. Okay. Um, so that we could keep all moving. Uh, you arrive in the elevator. Um, you tell the cracks sprite the, hey, we could use another. We could use a ride down. Yeah. Yep. All of a sudden, you feel the elevator uh... pass through the ward. So those that are magical, you can suddenly feel like this, this thing just squeezing past you. Um, that said, when you make it past, you feel something different. It it doesn't it does not like that. All that toxicity is is sort of gone. Oh, we lost somebody. Yeah, might be losing our yeah, yeah, back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So background count reduces. It changes. So give me a uh, an a sense. That's both services. Yes, that is both services. Okay. Um, and now that you're heading down, you can actually see, um, with like it just takes one hit. You can see another RCC down here. It's not this one isn't stealth, but you feel like you're going down a long ways. You feel like you're going down at least four or five stories. It's. Roll 20, still rolling the dice. There. Yep. Oh. That was me. There we go. We both got Doesn't matter. Two. We both did the same. Uh, so you get a sense that the, the current background count is uh, actually higher, um, but you recognize that the uh, the background is 
uh, aspected towards Aslaner Spanish or Aslaner magic. So it feels like you are um, heading towards a uh, lodge. Oh boy! Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Um, hey, Whippa. Um, I don't often say this, but prepare to geek the mage. All right. All right. So I know this uh, is a little troubling. <laughs> <laughs> Whipper's fully on board now. I haven't got to geek anything in a while. So what is the background count for casting spells? It is five. Five, huh? And so the elevator finally reaches the bottom. It's a slow moving, moving elevator. <laughs> um, and it dings and the doors slide open and we're going to roll for initiative. All right. I have that thing where you get to go first, no matter what your initiative is. Uh, adrenaline boost, right? Yes. And me without my increased reflexes. Yep. yep. I was typing it. I should have said something. Me without my jab. <laughs> that means you get to hit the popper later and then uh, take advantage of it then. I would only remember to buy some. Drugs are bad. <laughs> Better living through chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, roll 20. You can do it. So let Holy me... butts! Let me... Whipper. Whipper, what did you get? 13. Um... I got 13, yes. But you were first, so I'm going to put a star there. And then I've got Uz. You got 13 as well. And then I've got Curie. And yours is still rolling, right? Yep. And Lady Z. Got a 12. Oh, no, that's right. I'm, just, I'm not in the Matrix. Here, just in case, because it seems like it's waiting a really long time, I'm gonna just roll a d6. So it's eight plus one d6, which is five. So thirteen. Thirteen. Holy butts! That's a lot of thirteens. Yeah, it is. Uh, um, so we have to do what, Eric? Right? Yeah, we'll we'll let me finish rolling my set, and then we'll Eric it. And I'll be right back, guys. That is weird. Must okay, so next up uh so uh actually we can't do Eric yet anyway, but Whipper, what do you do? So you the doors open and bright light floods into the elevator. Uh Whipper gets exits the elevator and gets to one side so everybody else can get out with him or take the bullets that missed Whipper and instead. <laughs> <laughs> I see Whipper it's, it's called the Fable Funnel for a reason guys <laughs> uh, Whipper is just the I'm not a bullet sponge I'm a killing sponge <laughs> alright so you uh, you quickly duck out of the elevator um, so that's your move action um, but as I do it I, I whip out the monofilament whip Okay, so. simple action, monofill and whip is out. Uh, you still have another simple. All right. And I will, I will take a chance to observe and see what kind of opposition we have. All right. So give me a perception roll. All righty. What background music is this? I actually like this. This is a cyber tech bar. Six successes. What you see as you look around the room, uh, you can spot what looks like a bunch of lab tables. And across the room on sort of this pedestal, uh, there is an old book that you can spot. 
Um, standing at on either side of that pedestal are two guards uh, dressed in armor, full face mask, um, and the face mask is painted as a leopard. Oh boy! Um, in addition, you see two more guards standing sort of off to the sides uh, of the room. So uh, think of the room as a, a fairly big uh, 20 meter by 20 meter square. Um, so, and then, so about halfway down the room away from you on either side is these, these also these two guards. They're not dressed in leopard and they're dressed in normal, looks like uh, body vests. Um, and then you see two researchers in lab coats uh, standing over one of the lab tables, the one to the right. All right. All right, so next up on my list is the researchers uh, look up quickly um, and dive behind the other side of the table. And they are going to do a thing. I got a. Oh no, not the thing. Well, mages would be able to figure out what the hell they're doing, but. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, roll 20. Give me some love. Worst comes to worst, we'll switch. Maybe we switch the exploding dice at some point. Uh. Okay, so we're in Azzy Central. Yep, there are six of them. Oh, fuck. Uh, oh, come on. Like, do I have another dice roller? Roll 20. We'd have to be in a room. So at, at some point in the near future, I'll either set this up in the server or work with Danny to get the the REM alternative server. All right. Uh, I just sent you an invite. I've got it in this server. Okay, the problem is, is if I, I can't switch servers, or I can't switch what I'm looking at, because then I lose my cameras. <laughs> you're right, you do. Okay, you're right, that doesn't work for us. Okay. Alright, that's okay. Cool. We're, I've got this stuff. Uh, so next up on my list are my, my guards. Um, so the first one is going to close the book, grab it, and tuck it under his arm. The second one is going to raise his assault rifle towards the door um, and take aim, but does not fire it. Um, then up coming will be the my 13. So Uz and Kiri, you both are at 13. What's your Eric? Seven to start with. So edge seven, and I want to say us is five, two, two. Okay. So, Kiri, you are first. Oh boy. Um. All right. I think what I'm gonna do. You notice that two things, you know, two two spells were cast, right before you were able to go. But you don't know what spell because you haven't really perceived it. Shit. Okay. Um. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, Eep. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase reflexes, first of all. Okay. Background count five. Yep. Hell yeah. All right, so that's going to add... 6 plus 3d6 to my initiative. So I'm at 13 now. So that's going to be 19 plus another 3d6. I realized I needed to still hold on to that push to talk. 
Rolling the dice. Come on. Come on. Come on, roll 20. You could do it, little roll 20. Damn. Man. We have stressed. Thanks for your patience, viewers. This if only could build a dice bot into uh, Twitch. Actually, I probably could. Probably. All right. 11. So that puts me at 30. Okay. Um, I am also... Let me take that drain. Hold hold tight. But you didn't recklessly spell cast, so you still have a move. All right, so I took a bit of stun from that. Um, you cough a little blood in your hand. A little blood in your hand. Eh, I want to do a little better than I did, so I'm going to go ahead and use an edge again. There we go. Now I only take one stun. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, now I want to recklessly spell cast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's probably a good choice because this is a horrible place to start a firefight. Um, eep. So the, the, the question is what I'm going to do with it. So I've got one guy heading for the door. The other is bringing up a gun, right? Uh, the, so there's a bunch of people moving about. Um, somebody had well, yelled, "There's a book all, at the back." Somebody what? Uh, we're, we're gonna say Whipper basically let people know that there was the book and guards in the back. Okay. Um. So first of all, I'm gonna help everyone else out. Um, by doing another ice sheet, so all the bad guys have to deal with that shit. So we're going to do, uh, how big's the room? Uh, the room is 20 meters by 20 meters. All right, so um, I would need to do a force 10 to cover the whole thing. But I don't want to cover us right now. Um, and we don't really, because Whipper, you're not really melee, right? You're ranged? I'm melee. Oh, you're melee? I just got out of the way, though. <laughs> he didn't want to catch any bullets. <laughs> yeah, they call it the fatal funnel when you're in a doorway so the thing to do is you get out of the doorway so other people can follow you and get out of the doorway or catch right. the bullets that were meant yeah, for I you. Yeah, I haven't done my movement yet, so um yeah, I don't like it. Alright, you know what? Uh, I can't remember. Which is the good one The uh, for, for these guys? Mana Ball or Blast? Uh, they both do physical, uh, sorry, they both, yeah, they both do physical damage. Mana Ball does, is, uh... Is it resisted oh, yeah, by it will. Is. Um, so. Blast does stun. Oh, that's right. So, yep. Uh, but I can never remember which one is versus will versus which one is, uh... Mana is against will. Mana is against will. Okay. Um... Yeah, let's do that one. So, so I'm just going to... Mana ball. Yeah, I'm going to mana ball. I have spell shaping, so I'm not going to hit my people. Um, force 10. Force 10. Well, might as well. You're already oh, reckless you're spell casting. It's physical anyway. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> it's not like you get double physical. And so Curie takes so much physical drain, she explodes in the elevator. I'm also going to... There was one guard that put the, uh, put it under his arm and tried to take it, was running away. Yeah, he's still standing, um, but he, he looks rocked. Uh, can I reach him for a touch spell? 20 meters. Okay. Uh, and then there's a guy with a gun, right? Or is he a, is standing he beside him? He's twenty meters, and he is also looking a bit rocked. Uh, okay, I'm gonna hit the uh, the one with the gun that's a threat. Okay. Uh, with the knockout spell, force eight. 
Okay. Um, I figure to... And I'm a minus five, you said? Correct, you're at a minus five. Okay. Uh, the guy with the gun drops. <laughs> Lady Z, you're next. All right, who all is still standing? So we got the mages and... Dude with the book. Dude with the book. You don't really see the mages. Uh, they sort of, they, they ducked around a table. That's fine. There's not a whole lot I can do with them. Uh... Uh, I wouldn't be able to really see any uh, icons immediately unless I actually perceived, huh? Correct. All right, that's a simple. That's a simple, correct? Mm -hmm. That's I want to hop out of the elevator and initiate noise. And uh, I'm going to heft up my HK-227. <laughs> you're you're going to give them a greeting. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's nothing like lead as an introduction. It's, it's a great introduction. All right, going against... Especially when you don't have a sprite or anything. And so that's going against the guy with the book. Yes. Oh, man, I should have brought my drones with me. Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, so, so that's what? Two simples? Or still have time to attack? Or is, or is that not two simples? Movement? Uh, movement is free. Well, it's a movement action. Okay. Um, and then okay. simple would be take aim, simple fire, or you can do... That's just simple fire. Okay, so you do take aim and fire. Um, is this a burst fire? Um, yes. With uh, recoil control five. Okay. Just gotta find my gun again. Sorry, kind of automatic skill. Oh, that's unfortunate. I fucked up. Oh, well. Um, haha. Use Edge? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to use Edge to make this work. Because that was a big oversight. Yeah, Edge makes everything better. Yes, it does. Two hit. Oh, I got, I got with edge. Oh, that's two D. That's ten D five. Oh, <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me, give me the right, the right one. We'll, we'll yeah. feel free to reroll that. Yeah, let's see. Let uh, I was like, why are my fives in green? <laughs> oh, geez, what happened? All right, I'll let you re-roll that. All right. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, you you absolutely you hit him uh, for two net. Uh, that's the HK. So I want to say that's nine at a minus five with APDS. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, this is normal. It's just standard rounds. So... Oh, standard rounds. Okay. So it'd be a minus yeah. one, I believe, with the H. Yeah. 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 Um, and so. Seven. Oh, it's Maybe ten. Minus one. So it's gonna be twelve minus one. Uh, they get the roll of their armor soak. One. 
Uh, so it doesn't seem to affect him at all. Oh, jeez. Damn. Okay. Don't like that. Hit him right on the sappy play. Bing, 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 bing. It's the book. It's keeping him alive. Curie, you are up. And you guys had just sort of... So Whipper had just gotten inside the room. Uh, Uz went, ran to the other side of the room. Whipper went before me last uh, initiative. Yeah, I, oh. I got to use the adrenaline surge to go before me. So if That's I recall right. correctly, yeah. I get to go on three. Yeah. Again. Okay, and I forgot yeah. that I also increased my reflexes. So. Yeah, so you're at 20 okay. right now. 20 right now. Oops, I'm sorry, puppy. Um, okay, so I'm gonna. So who's left? Uh, you can see a guy standing up with a book. Um, you haven't seen the mages. Okay, I don't like that, but yeah, I don't like that. Um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and um. I don't want to do anything too physical because I don't want to damage the book. That's very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think what I'll do... So, like, I have no idea where any of the mages are. Like, yeah, behind yeah. anything. They went behind a, a table, but you have no line of sight on them. Um, can I levitate the table? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, let's do that. Peekaboo! All right. <laughs> And then uh, after that will be my dudes. My dudes. All right, All right. six. No six. drain. And I, I, I cast it at force two. I don't imagine it's a hefty table. I mean, it's steel. It's a, it's a lab table. Okay. I should have called it first. Um, Even if you cast it at force but, four, yeah. you got four hits, and you have six successes on drain. So you can lift it. Yep. There are okay. two guys that are ducked down behind there, and guys use gender neutrally. They're uh, hard to tell. They've got big, bulky lab coats on. Get them, friends. All right. Next up are them. Oops. So one of them runs out and attacks you, Kiri. Um, you notice this um, long notice this red long... whip that's sort of dripping a little bit. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, so give me a dodge. I'm not good at this part. <laughs> this one's going to hurt, by the way. So it's reaction plus intuition, right? It is reaction plus intuition. Oh, shit. But don't forget you have increased reflexes. Uh, how, what does that add to it? Uh, whatever your reaction boost was. Okay, so it was six. Okay, so, so up to four. Uh, reaction, up to four. what? Uh, up to four. So, okay, so my reaction is four, my intuition is four, and my uh, increased reflexes was another four, so I get 12 dice. Yep. Okay. I'm afraid, and making roll 20, making me wait is not adding to it. Okay, four successes. It's the end of the game. I'm going to go ahead and post edge. Okay. Jeez. Nine. Uh, it's a good thing you did. Uh, this thing comes down where you were standing, and it you can see it disrupt the air around it as this sort of curtain of red whips through. Um, dislike. Dislike. The other, one, gonna, the other one. I want to dodge behind Whipper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the other one runs towards us, and does the same thing. Okay. Okay. 
Can I take the bonus from Curie's increased reflexes also? <laughs> no. You can take it from yours. <laughs> I never cast. I didn't cast it. I wanted some of those guys to end. In six, I could give you my edge. <laughs> I do like that ability. I like it too. That's one of the. I, I overall I miss pre and post edging in six, but uh, you can do some other cool stuff. But I really miss using edge like I do in this. Are you edging us? Oh yeah, I'm post edging. Okay. Ooh. All right. So All right. what? Oh no. So what that's going to be is that's going to be a that guy got that. So it's going to be eleven p minus six. Soak, soak, soak. And soak, it soak, and it is a soak. magical attack, as this whip whips towards you. So if you have any mystic armor, it doesn't count. Which my, my, my mystic armor is low enough; it would be negated by the background count, anyways, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's true. Yep. So, Glad I uh, didn't waste time casting. <laughs> so okay, so I've got sixteen. No. Yeah. Ah, that's right. No. Sorry. Math hard. Math hard and roll 20 slow. It's a wonderful combination. It's thinking. I was hoping that maybe my server would be fine. I pay them money to, to have a, a good roll 20. Prioritize yours. <laughs> please, please, please. I'm out of edge. I love it. All right, so you are going to take uh, thir what did I say? That was 15, and you soaked three? Yep. So you're going to take uh, 12. Physical. Oh. Uh, oh. And I have uh, 10, so I'm two into the... Um, two. Okay. <laughs> so well, I, 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 I kind of wraps around me, and I get spun to the floor. Yeah, and you're bleeding profusely. Yep. Bleeding buckets. It's a good thing you didn't do that ice thing. It would that that ice would look really disgusting. Now. <laughs> it looked like a hockey arena. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, and so next up would be the guard. Um, the guard is going to shoot at you on the ground with his pistol that he has in his other hand. Ouch! Ouch! And basically executes you. Damn. No! All right. And so, uh, we are at two minutes till. We can come back to this next week, and we can do a one-hour wrap-up session if everybody is available. Or we can uh, push... Next Saturday? Yeah, I should be available. Uh, I think, Fade, uh, are you able to? Yeah, my scheduling for Saturday is usually a bit bad. Let me double-check. Okay. So that is, I've got a couple different options here. I can also s get this back uh, cinematically as well to, to wrap it up. That is another option. Because at this point, you have a control on the situation, to be honest. Yeah, as soon as it's our turn again, they're done, so. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's, it's going down next Okay, so we'll we'll do it cine cinematically. Um, so what ends sure. up happening is uh, you watch him put two bullets in. That that's it, right? Like the Whipper comes in, clean off with the mage's head with his whip. Absolutely decimates him. Um, Kiri blasts another one. Uh, the HK blasts the the guard again, um, and and com it knocks him out at this point. You are able to grab the book, although it's now got some blood splatter all over it. Um, and you start booking it out of there. Um, you probably drag with you the the expired uh, compatriot. Um, you make the call. Uh, you guys are able to to meet with him at a church located up in Capitol Hill, um, where you are provided with certified cred sticks. And he thanks you for retrieving the book. Um, but you have a lost comrade. 
We still get his new yen, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is not missions play, so I don't do per head. What I do is uh, you would you would basically negotiate it for 60,000 new yen. So there's 60,000 divided amongst whoever's left. Okay, so there's oh, 20k. Right? Only cost of life. Damn. Uh, so surviving the mission, <laughs> you get two karma. Uh, you achieve the objective. objective. That's two karma. And the highest opposed dice pool you went against was gives you another three. So seven karma. Um, you did a good deed, so I'll give you a bonus karma. That's eight karma. Uh, you each gain a street cred. Um, but now you have the memory of a fallen comrade. A fellow man. Yeah, that's fellow. Damn, that's yeah. rough. My, uh, my good friend, uh, Uzzy. Yeah, Uzzy. Man. <laughs> <laughs> good I, times. I, I remember riding in the Americar with him. <laughs> yeah. Remember you did no that cool drove, spin like... out and knocked out that like motorcycle? Yeah, that was that was good times. Good man, times. man, I'll never forget his favorite drink, uh, water. Yeah, love water. <laughs> uh, also, uh, I know that we don't have the contact that uh, Uzi had uh, for scanning the book, but I want it for my reasons. So I'm still. Do you scan, scan it for it yourself? Have it, have it over. Yeah, I think we're all going to take the scan on it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so uh, you have two days, or basically a day and a half. So you're able to scan the book and get a copy for yourself. Um, it does appear to be a, a, a book of rituals, a uh, fairly old. Um, it. Uh, the initial translation tells you that it's uh, it has been transcribed numerous times through the ages, and so there are probably copying artifacts. So uh, think of the JPEG compression issues. Uh, you have the same <laughs> thing with copying the book over and over again, that the rituals themselves, um, while being representative of the original rituals they represented, that don't necessarily work straight out of the book. Hmm. Hmm. No way for that to get some weird results. Mm -hmm. Hence why they were doing it underground in Glow City. <laughs> I feel like I saw this episode of Buffy. <laughs> so what I ended up hitting you with was the Blood Whip. Oof. And so those are Blood Mages. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. That's, as technology is virtually like, nothing yeah. else they got. That was savage. Sorry, yeah. Tom. Yeah, I was. I had years invested in that character. It's, <laughs> it's good. It's good. On. Did you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dog years, <laughs> maybe. You, you asked me to join. You asked me to join this on Thursday. <laughs> and built the oh, character I didn't since know what then. Character you were gonna pick out? I big. I built. I think I. I think I honestly came up with the concept yesterday morning, and that's when me and uh, Aaron started talking about it. Um, well, you know, now you can just, since it was your first time playing with uh, Uzi, you can have uh, um, Scoozy, <laughs> his twin brother. <laughs> no, 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 this, is, this, this, this guy's dead. I'll, I'll, it, it, it'll be another concept. This guy, this guy died. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah. hopefully, y'all had fun. Um, I had a, I had a blast. Yep, it was a lot of fun, <laughs> guys. That was Thank fun. You so much. Um, and so we'll we'll plan another one of these. We'll get another shadow run together in Seattle, and uh, we'll see who's able to join us. And appreciate everybody who watched. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Fade, for joining us. Yes, it thank was you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thanks for a lot of fun. Me. Thanks, Fade. Uh, otherwise, have a good one, and we'll see you on the other side. Adios. Bye. Stay safe in the shadows. Later. Stay safe. Yep. <laughs>